What is the killer crossover? Now we know that the killer crossover is associated with Tim Hardaway, and if I were to ask a player what it is, a coach, a trainer, whoever, typically they're gonna tell me it's a between the legs cross. Now what I want you to understand is that moves have so much more to do with your feet than they do with your hands. So think about that. If everyone's always just said a between the legs and a cross, all they're really telling you to do is something with your hands. And that's what I want you to be able to understand in this video is what actually makes a killer crossover and why Tim Hardaway did not have a killer crossover. He had four of them that he typically would do. And if you don't understand all four, chances are strong, you don't have footwork at all. So let's dive into these four killer crossovers so you actually understand the footwork differences, even when they're just small details, make a huge difference when actually applying it to the game. So the first crossover that we wanna be able to go over is simply taking a partial step. Now, I'm gonna use my footwork grip mat right now because it's gonna paint the picture for us about how footwork deals with space. Because if you can't deal with space when you're crossing the ball in front of you, chances are strong, you're gonna get your pocket picked. And a lot of players just simply get ripped on crossovers because they don't have understanding of their feet and how it actually impacts their space. So if I start on the back row of this mat and I take a partial step with my outside leg as I go through, Notice I covered a little bit of space forward. Now that's probably the most common form of the killer crossover that people do, is they take that partial step. And so if I take that step forward, I can obviously shift, with, so there's other components that go into it. We're focusing on the feet. And then of course I can cross, and then I can go. So that would be your partial step through, right into your crossover. And these details are gonna matter, these names are gonna matter for you to identify which crossovers are which. So if I was to work on that, I would set up, I have my partial step through, and then of course I can drive from there. Now that is one of the four sets of footwork. The second way that Tim would often go is with an extended step. Now that means that he obviously feels like he has space in front of him to reach. Maybe he's really selling that length to really try to find that space or to create a reaction, but that simply means you have space in front of you. You can't take that type of step if you don't have space in front of you. And so that would be an extended step through. So that means if I was using the back row of this mat, I now would have to make sure that I step off of it. So now I have accountability to reach for that space. And of course, if they go towards that driving line, I can still cross over. And so killer crossover number two would simply be your ability to extend and step into that cross. And now we've gotten two of the more common types of crossovers, which takes us to number three. If I was to do a split through, now what I want you to be able to notice now is I'm gonna stand on the middle of this mat and I'm still working on the same confines of my space, but if I don't wanna go anywhere forward, and so the partial step took me a little forward, the extended step really ate up my space, but if I wanna keep more of my space, now I can simply split my feet before I actually have my attack. Now, even then, I lose a little bit of space forward. If you notice where I'm at, I'm, my foot at least went a little bit closer to the defense. And if my foot went a little bit closer to the defense, that means my ball came a little bit closer to the defense. But it's a whole lot less closer to the defense when I do a split. So the third killer crossover would simply be your ability to do a split through right into that cross. So now I split my feet and then I have my crossover from there. And that of course would be the three most common ways. Now, when you look at this footwork, you might say, well, I do all those. You're not really showing me anything. But when you're working on your killer crossover, what I wanna ask you, are you working on all three or are you randomizing? Do you really know how often you're taking a partial step or an extended step or a split through? Because if you can train those things and you can get organized, you're gonna make sure that you have all the solutions you need 
according to space, which brings me to number four. Now number four is very common if you study Tim's game, but is not very common in the game of basketball, which is what we would call a split pivot through. Now we know what a split through would look like. If I was standing in the middle, both my feet split. And so that would be a split through. A split pivot means I'm accomplishing the same body position as a split would have been, but I'm keeping one foot down. Well, why would I want to do that? Because now I can control 100% of my space. And so if I'm starting once again on the back of this mat, what I want you to be able to see as I go through my leg, instead of going forward and towards my defender, what Tim Hardaway would often do is he'd bring this foot back and let his hips fall down. Now that's not stepping behind him. That would not be a reverse step because his hips are not going that way. It's just simply allowing that back leg to reach a little bit back so he can sink into that same explosive stance as he would as he split through. But now, if you notice, I got all this space in front of me. And what's the most dangerous thing about crossing over in front of a defender? Is them taking it. So the more space I can keep in the beginning, the more freedom I have to cross over in front. And this one is possibly the biggest secret, the biggest weapon you could have at your disposal if you understand how to do the split pivot. And so I start on that back row, I drop that foot back, letting my hips fall, now I have all that room to cross, and now you have a very comfortable killer crossover out of that split pivot through. Those are your four options if you're really going to have all four of the crossovers that Tim Hardaway made famous. But here's what I always want to be able to challenge you with, the reason why we have names for all these different details. A partial step, an extended step, a split through, and a split pivot is because the better that I stay organized and identify the details, the more I can train for those details and make sure they're in my game. It's not as if I'm in the game thinking, oh, I'm about to do a split pivot through, or I'm gonna do a split through, or I'm gonna do a partial step. No, it's simply so in the game, as long as I have the ingredients in my system, I can respond at a moment's notice. And I can respond to those habits and then they become instincts in real play. And that's why if you're really gonna have a crossover game like Tim Hardaway, if you're really gonna have the killer crossover, well then you better work on all four of these options because that will allow you to play with any space that you have in the game. Hey guys, this is Michael Lancaster with IPT. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Otherwise, turn on post notifications so you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And of course, if you wanna check out other videos we've done, you can always find this one here or this one there. Either way, make sure you're staying up to date with what we're doing here on our YouTube channel because we have new content coming every single week.